In this video demonstration, we're going to talk about on-off control and how to integrate more logic into your control system. So previously, we've talked about um, PID control, or rather a subset. We've mostly focused on PI control, or proportional integral control. And actually, this control system is more sophisticated than some other control systems that are commonly found in industry and just in the everyday world. So one of these control systems is a simple on-off controller where you have fairly simple switches that turn on or off and regulate your system that way. You'll f frequently find on-off control systems in home heating and air conditioning. So here I've got a model of a home set up where we're putting energy into our cooling system and by increasing that energy into our cooling system we will decrease the temperature of our home. So just to demonstrate the model I'll be working with, I am running a simulation time of 120 minutes. I'm making taking a step at time 60 minutes and this is going to be a system with an on-off controller. So in a typical home air conditioning system you either turn your air conditioning on or you turn it off. There's no option to turn it on 25% of the way or 50% of the way. So you have to do discrete control rather than continuous control. A PI controller would be continuous control because it you can set your manipulated variable to any input over a range whereas an on-off controller allows you basically to just be on or off. So for this particular demonstration I'm going from zero, so the off state, to 50. So 50 would be units of cooling per unit time. And when I make that step change, you can see my home is going from an initial temperature of 72. When I turn on my air condi conditioning system, I see my um, the temperature of my home gradually decreasing. It doesn't actually reach a steady state here. So the simplest thing to do to control this on-off block would be to implement a simple feedback control algorithm where we are measuring our temperature. We feed that temperature to this on-off controller, also known as a thermostat. We enter in our set point, so if we wanted to cool our house to 70 degrees, um, this is where we'd enter that set point here. And the output of this controller is going to be the cooling rate, which is again going to be zero when the system is off and 50 when the system is on. So I will connect my manipulated variable back to my system and I'll dive in here and show you the, some simple logic that I've set up for implementing this control scheme. Alright, so I have my two inputs, temperature of the actual home and the set point temperature and my output is the cooling rate and I have this simple if then statement so if my temperature exceeds my set point then set the cooling rate to 50 otherwise set the cooling rate to zero so when I go over my set point turn my air conditioning system off and when I come back down below my set point um, then turn it off I may have misspoken there so when I exceed my set point turn the cooling system on then when I get below my set point, turn it back off. So that's very simple logic, and let's see what happens when we simulate this system. So I'm going to look at my cooling rate first, and as you can see, I'm only simulating for 120 minutes, but during that 120 minutes, I'm doing dozens of switching events, so I'm, it's initially on until I get below my set point, then it turns off, then it has to turn back on. If I zoom back in to get higher resolution on my time you can see that within a period of just a few minutes so here's two minutes we're switching the system on three almost four different times so there's this very frequent switching if I look at my temperature from far away it looks like I'm controlling my temperature very well and I actually I am when I zoom in here to look at a big bigger picture of um, how my temperature is doing. You can see there's actually quite a bit of oscillation, although it's very small right around that set point. So in a practical sense, this type of a control system is really undesirable because it's causing our system to switch on and off at a very rapid pace. And you typically don't want to do this when you're turning on and off pieces of equipment like a home 
uh, air conditioning system, that's going to cause excessive wear and tear on your system, and it's not it's not going to last very long, and it's not going to perform very efficiently because it takes it a while to to actually switch on and um, reach the temperature that it's feeding into your home. So this is not actually the way that a home thermostat system works. A home thermostat system actually works by controlling within a dead band. So rather than just having a fixed temperature set point, we want to give our system a low set point and a high set point, and then we want to set up some smart logic for that system to switch on and off the system at a much less frequent rate. So I've already coded another thermostat that will work better. I'm calling this the dead band thermostat, and it's a dead band thermostat because it's controlling our temperature to within a dead band, so it has a lower limit of 70 and it has an upper limit of 71. It is still, it's still going to work basically the same way, so you'll measure the temperature of your home, and it has some logic in it to um, to tell you to tell the air conditioning system when to turn on and turn off. Its output is again going to be the cooling rate. So I'll disconnect this other controller and now connect my dead band thermostat, or just this is just the way a regular thermostat works. So before I connect this other variable, I want to get in here into the logic to demonstrate how this works. So my function inputs are the actual measured temperature, my low set point, and my high set point. And I have another um, another variable called the cooling status. So that just the cool status is a binary variable. So it's one when my cooling system is turn is on, and it's zero when my cooling system is off. So I'll walk you through the logic here. If my temperature exceeds the high set point, then I want to set my cooling status to one. I want to turn on my cooling system. And I don't turn it off until my temperature goes below the lower set point. And in that case, when that happens, I set my cooling status equal to off. So now I have another if-then statement that um, sets the cooling rate based on the cooling status. So if my cooling status is equal to 1, then my cooling rate will be 50. Otherwise, my cooling rate will be 0. So the functionally, it's quite similar, except the way that we set this cooling status. So we want our system to demonstrate what's called hysteresis. And if you haven't heard that word, think of the word history. We want our system to to maintain a history of what has happened in the past so that it, so we don't get this constant switching behavior. And the way we implement hysteresis is by using a memory block. So if I go back to my um, Simulink library browser. I'm going to go to discrete and I'm going to get another block called memory. So when I hover over the functionality of this block it says apply a one integration step delay. So the output is the previous input value. So I'll drag and drop that memory block. And I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to collect this cooling status to here. So this memory block, what it's going to do is it's going to take the cooling status of my air conditioning system is on. It will record that and it will store it. And then I can check the value of the previous cooling status in that same function. So I've done something a little bit funny here where this cooling status is both an input and an output to my function. And basically, the way that this will work is that I don't, if my temperature exceeds my high set point or it goes below my low set point, then in either of those events, I'll be changing the cooling status. But if neither of those things is true, if my temperature is between my low set point and my high set point, then I want to leave this cooling status alone. I don't want to change anything. So you can see. There's no other line of code that sets the cooling status. So I'll show you how this works now by um, running the system. So I've got a low set point of 70 and a high set point of 71. And now I want to 
only turn on my system when it exceeds the high set point, and I don't want to turn it back off until it gets down below the low set point. So if I run it, I'm actually going to run it a little bit longer. So 240 minutes now. I look at my temperature. So you can see this is performing just very much like the way your home air conditioning system works. We cool from 72 down to our low set point, at which point the cooling status changes from 0 to 1. And actually, I misspoke. The cooling status is 1 here, and it changes from 1 to 0. So we turn off our cooling system. That allows the temperature in the home to rise. When it reaches the high set point, um, then we change that cooling status back to 1, and we cool down to our low set point. So you can see we're still getting this oscillation in our system, but our, our temperature is basically floating between this dead band of 70 and 71. And as you can see in this period of um, between... so roughly an hour we're seeing our thermostat I mean our air conditioning system pretty much only comes on twice and when it does come on it's only staying on for about 10 or 20 minutes it's it's staying on for 10 or 20 minutes rather than frequently switching like it was before so if we were to put a scope here on our cooling rate and another scope here on our cooling status You'll see this cooling status change, oscillate between 0 and 1. And you'll see our cooling rate oscillate between 50 and 0. So this is way, a way to, to have hysteresis in your system, which is a desirable behavior for an on-off controller, so that you don't get frequent switching because your temperature is crossing its set point very frequently. So I've shown you this because this memory block and doing logic like this gives you a lot of freedom to customize logic in your system. However, Simulink already has a block built in that basically does this for you. And I'll go find it. So it's called a relay block. And this relay block does the same thing. You enter in your set point, um, well, you measure your temperature, and then you have a switch on point. So we switch on our system when it's above 71. We switch it off when it's below 70. And then its output is 50 when it's on and 0 when it's off. So this looks a lot cleaner. And in most circumstances, when you're doing simple on-off control, this block is a good way to handle things. I'll go to 240 again in my simulation. And when I look at the output of that block, it looks very similar to the controller that we just programmed. Has almost the same performance characteristics, it's just a little bit simpler.